So this here is the hackberry tree, or part of the tree anyway. Um, and the part that you eat from this is the berries. Um, so these guys are ripe-ish. Um, they turn like a dark purple, almost like a blackish brown color when they're fully ripe. Um, so these are close, could use another week or two to get really ripe. Um, they're very tasty, they're sweet, they taste kind of like fig, um, which I think is really delicious. So what you do is just pop it in your mouth and you crunch through the seed and eat it. If you have like fragile teeth or something, maybe you should mash it up first, like a mortar and pestle or if you have a strong blender, I might be able to do it. Um, but you can just crunch right through it. And the advantage of doing that versus sucking on the pulp and spitting out the seed is that the seed is actually highly nutritious. It's the most nutritious part of the hackberry. It's got a lot of protein and vitamins and minerals in it. So you don't really want to spit it out because it's um, the part that's going to be the most nourishing. So here we have the leaves and the berries of the hackberry. Um, you can see here the uneven base. This part is higher than this part right there. And you can see the teardrop shape it's rounded at the top and comes to a narrow point. And you can see all the little sharp serrations there. Um, these galls are very common. They're little uh, bug eggs in there. And you find them so much that you can use them really as a identifying feature of hackberry. Um, and then here we have the berries. So this one's close to ripe. Um, it's a little red still. When they get fully ripe, they're going to be more of a dark purple, like brownish, dark brown kind of color. Um, so I would give this another week or two before harvesting. But um, it's delicious and well worth the harvest. So here's the bark of the hackberry, and as you might notice, it's a gray color uh, versus other bark that might be more brownish or reddish in tone. This one definitely has a gray cast to it. And you can probably also see that the texture is very interesting. Um, if you use your imagination, it kind of looks like somebody took a axe or hatchet to it and just like hacked up the bark and that's where the name comes from, hackberry. Um, so when you're trying to identify the tree and you're looking at the bark, just remember hackberry equals hacked up bark. Alright, so behind me here we have three hackberry trees in a row um, and as you can probably tell they are full-sized, full-grown trees, you know, they get really big. They're not like a little shrub or anything like that. Um, and you often see them growing in areas like this along roadsides and in boulevards and in parks um, because they're often planted uh, ornamentally or planted, you know, by the city or landscapers because they're such a fast-growing tree. Um, so like in the wild, you'll find this tree more often uh, in floodplains or along rivers or even in upland forests. Um, and in that sense, the range extends from the eastern US through southern Canada. Uh, so it goes west to Manitoba and then south through the mountain states of the US down in Texas and then back east to the coast, um, more or less. There's a few places where it's missing, but um, so that's where they'll find it growing in its natural, like wild habitat. Um, but if you live outside that range, just you know, go ahead and look along the roadsides, look in parks and places like that, because chances are it's being planted uh, for landscaping purposes. So uh, yeah, it's a very common tree and it's delicious. So go out there and eat it.